Let's begin with uh, these guys over here. Now, they're exact values, and if you have a look, this is cannon fodder for your calculators, okay? Yes, you actually can work out, for instance, 10 to 125. I could say that that's 10 of 180 degrees plus 45 degrees, and so that's 10 of 45. Why is that, by the way? Why is that equal to that? Because of the? Because the period of 10 is 180 Thank you. So every 180 degrees, you're getting the same value over and over again. And you know what 1045 is? It's 1. Now, it's good to be able to do that. However, if you're in a test, just whip that calculator out. There's no reason why not to. Okay? People have to, used to have to look up books for this kind of thing. That's why you have a calculator. You can do that for all of these. These are fine. These will come out pretty easily. Your calculator will spit out a weird value. For this, right, it'll be minus 0 0.57, so I can't remember what it is. But if you square that, it'll give you a half. What if right? you rationalize it? Say that again. Rationalize. What if you don't rationalize yeah, it? Do you have to rationalize it? Well, you've, oh, as in this versus, uh, versus this? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. This is actually, despite the fact that it's not a rational denominator, this is what you'll find is the most common way to say it. So I, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, if you wrote this, obviously it's still the same number, but uh, but this is fine. Okay. So you're one over three for cot sixty. Uh, you don't have a cot sec or cosec button on your calculator, but all you have to do is input one on ten sixty, uh, and then there's your other exact values. Okay, are you happy with that? Yeah, the negatives they do matter. Okay, now just coming down to this guy. So have a look. Now, you gotta watch out. Let me point out for you because someone asked me this before and I just kind of, um, I let it go for a little while. Cos squared, we haven't looked at the graphs of the squares of the trigonometric functions. So let me take this opportunity to show you. Okay. Now if you go and take in cos x and slap brackets around the whole thing and square it, this is what you get. Okay. Now, just ignore the fact that my, um, your, uh, let me see, if I just put in x equals 2 pi, oh no, you're gonna, I'm going to have to do, um, oh yeah, there we go, there it is. Okay, so let me put this right next to the regular cos x graph and see if I can explain roughly what's going on. Okay. Uh, there, that'll do. Okay, so purple graph. There's cos x going whoop, down like that, as you would expect it to. Okay, So when you do cos x and then you square the whole thing, what we write as cos squared x, you get this weird thing that weighs up and down more than the previous function. Can you see why? Have a think about it, for instance. Let's have a look in here. Just go from 0 to 90. 0 to 90. We're looking at this blue graph. That's the one we actually want. It also goes from 1 to 0. That shouldn't surprise you. Because 1 squared is 1, and 0 squared is 0. Okay? But then what happens from 90 to 180? What's going on? Yeah. Okay, for starters, the entire blue graph is above the axis. Do you notice that? Okay? Because you're taking some number and you're squaring it, so therefore it's all positive. Very similar to absolute value. But less similar, the shape actually changes a little bit. So you get, you get this extra copy of this. It looks just like, does this part here not look like a cos function except sort of squashed into that little space. So you get this and then you get another whole copy. So what you're getting now is um, you're solving, coming back to the original question, when is it equal to three quarters? So y, y equals three quarters. Let's get rid of this guy. Okay, so you can see there's the one, two, three, four solutions you're supposed to get. Now coming back to the working, how do I get four solutions? Well, when you take the square root of both sides over here, you get plus or minus. Another way to see this, which I clued you into this morning, is that that line there, I could write it like this. I know it probably doesn't look like much of an improvement, but it might help you see actually, you can write this thing as difference of squares, can you not? There's the A minus B. And there is the A plus B. Do you agree? Does that make sense? You see three quarters is just root three or two squared. So your exact value is going to be 30 degrees. And this actually makes it even easier for you. Since you've got plus and you've got minus, that means you don't need to worry about which quadrants you're in. 
you're in all the quadrants, right? You've got the acute angle, you've got the obtuse one, uh, there it is, 180 minus 30. And then you've got the two reflex angles, 180 plus 30 and 360 minus 30. Does that make sense? Four solutions.